Hey, how's it going? It's your boy Chris for the Rupal. And if you're hearing this, you're probably going, hey, what, what what's going on here? What's going on here? <laughs> well, see, we went through a rebrand. The original podcast was called Speaking of Which. And I didn't want to get rid of a certain number of these episodes um, because I was like, they kind of relate to Drunken Book Club and I wanted to keep them alive. So I wanted to keep these adventure episodes alive with the rebranding. So... Here it is, here's the message letting you know what's kind of going on, why I didn't say welcome to Drunken Book Club, or talking about what we drank, yada 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 kind of thing. Um, but here it is, and our new socials for this series are dbc underscore pod, not, at, not the old one, that's our Twitter account, <laughs> and possibly Instagram come soon. And we also have our Patreon at patreon.com slash drunken book club, where you can pay a dollar and tell us what book to read, and... To have a jovial time with us. All right. Thanks for joining me, and you guys enjoy the episode. Bye bye. Hello, adventurers, to another episode of Let's Read. I'm your dungeon master, Christopher, the Creeping Ripple, joined today with... The Smashing Barbarian, Sam. And... The Very Confused Warlock, Noelia. And... The Nonsensical Bar, Lise. Hey, he said his name. Hey. Hey. Aww. It's I the end of the it. world. It grows so fast. <laughs> I remember <laughs> Character growth. Character growth! Oh my. There we go. Your own Character arc. development. Who in this month, on, on speaking of which, or well, next three episodes, we are doing stuff related to Dungeons and Dragons in preparation for the Dungeons and Dragons movie that's coming out. Uh -huh. uh, this week's episode, we're reading a uh, an endless quest book from the people behind Dungeons and Dragons TSR Hobbies before Wizards, uh, Wizards of the Coast bought them out. Uh, and the book is called Hero of Washington Square. <laughs> the most Dungeons and Dragons adventure. So grab your D20s and get ready. That's adorable, actually. Dude, that, why does a dude in, on the cover look like the kid from Stranger Things? Because oh. this book was made in the 80s. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. fun okay, fact, that by makes the way. Sense. They have classic D&D, &D, like from the animated series, yeah. figures at Target. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Including the barbarian with Uni. I do love that kid. And, um... And this book was made in 83, so that's why he looks like the kid from Stranger Things. Yeah, the, the cut. It's the cut. Yeah. It's, it's the oh it's what I refer to as the penis haircut. Wait, let me because it is a bowl cut with a little. Oh yeah, that, right that's there. the penis haircut. Low cap, yeah, low cap. All that right. Haircut appears in Psychonauts one. Yeah. I'm trying to remember where. Which one? He's the kid who has clairvoyance, and he's like, I can see everything, and he's a perv. Yeah, he's the one outside oh, yeah. the girl's cabin. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. he's like. Just staring at him. At first, I wasn't paying, noticing why, and I was like, "What? what is he He kind of looks like Mac from uh, Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. Oh, yeah, he does. Second episode in a row where I reference Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. I'm just, I'm just realizing how crazy that the Psychonauts game was. Yeah. Oh, Psychonauts is fucking weird. Yeah, no, I love it, but... Yeah. Nice. Did you ever have a problem that you ignored, hoping it would go away, and no. then it got worse because you ignored it? Don't judge me. Uh... That's what happened to me. And that's why I was sitting in the park staring at the F on my report card and wondering if there's still a foreign legion. <laughs> what? Oh, Hashtag relatable. Oh, I won't get spanked or grounded or anything like that. It'll be worse. Dad will say sadly, I'm disappointed in you, son. Yeah, I just kill me. expected better. Because we can't talk about child abuse in And mom writing. will cry. Yeah, just mom kill me. That's, that's better. I'm not dumb. I'm real good in science and math and the other stuff. But English has gotten weird. Diagramming? It ought to be a dirty word. It's almost a foreign language. How do you do diagramming in You can English? diagram a sentence of like what part's the subjective and I can't remember. Which one's the participle? I got, hard, I got high enough in English that I just kind of skipped that part. Yeah, I, I, yeah, we skipped that part too. I don't remember that part, so yeah, me too. Then we had to memorize and recite a poem. I must be cursed. I got the charge of the Light Brigade by Tennyson. It's 55 lines! I'm say, that is messed up. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's messed up. Like, it's like, uh, oh, here's your poem, the entire, entirety of Iliad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
But Here's, it's a giant here's poem. your poem. Anything from Edgar Allan Poe. There you go. Fucking give him a Shel Silverstein poem. Cool guy. I got Scary a, looking man. I actually got one that I really liked, and it was actually like three and a half pages for one of them, but I did do it. Because mm, I really liked you. the poem. I was like, I wanted to do it. See, if you, can, yeah. if you can do that at Bravo, I can, I can never memorize that crap. I had to memorize a lot of shit. And again, I can retain memory of odd things, but not others. I really tried, but every time I got up, my hands started sweating, my throat got dry, and my voice kind of squeaked. Then Miss Roar, R-O-H-R, Roar? Yeah. I guess so, yeah. yeah. Roar. Uh, would tap her ruler on the desk and say, <laughs> Speak up, Robert! We can't hear you! Sometimes school is the pits. I'm littler than the other guys, and I'm not good at sports, which is all they talk about. Wow, this kid is so relatable. I'm gonna say, hey, Except Chris. for g- 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 girls. Oh, no. Piss itself. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I don't understand girls at all. When I walk by, they giggle for no reason. Oh. Then my face and neck get red, and they giggle more because I'm a redneck. Yeehaw! <laughs> See, I was gonna say, is this you, Chris? But you actually had, you always were able to talk to girls. Yeah, I can talk to girls. I'm talking to one right now. <gasps> Anyhow... There I was in the park, ready to hang myself from the nearest statue. <laughs> what? <laughs> when, when Pigeon Mary sat down next to me. Hi, a, Pigeon Mary. A bunch of pigeons came with her, and for a minute we were buried in birds. <laughs> my folks don't approve of Mary, but she and Bagel Ben are my best friends. Oh, I oh, love God. Bagel Ben. Bagel Ben molests those I'm bears. sorry, this kid is a fucking loser. Bagel Ben is a moo. Yeah, I was gonna I'm say. Just, I'm just reminded of uh, Home Alone too. What yeah, with the, with the pigeon lady. Yeah. <laughs> a bu- oh wait, where was I? Uh, ben got his name because his pockets are always full of bagels. He's just an old Jewish man. Okay. Oh my say. gosh, I thought he was talking about a pigeon. Okay, the pockets full of bagels. That's hilarious. I got a pocket, got a pocket full of bagels. bagels. <laughs> he says they're the perfect food. Yes, they, they are. taste the same, fresh or stale. And they never spoil. That's a bald face life. So they do get moldy. Yeah, they, they can't get moldy. But That's a lie. But I they love are great. bagels. Oh, they are great. Good. Yeah. Oh, give me a bagel with uh, buffalo cream cheese <laughs> right on there and everything bagel. Oh, I'm in heaven. I'm a plain man. Just give me a plain olive. I like everything bagel with plain cream cheese, personally. Mm-hmm. Mm, jalapeno cream cheese or... I like I like a sesame bagel. That's that's probably my second favorite one. So there's a local, I think local as far as I can tell, called Bubby's yeah. here in Tucson. They have a lavender honey cream cheese. Huh. Now I'm thinking of everything everything everywhere all at once. I don't think people should put lavender in things that go in your mouth. No, it's an edible flower. Well, it doesn't taste good, I guess, is what I meant. So sometimes it's been a little uh, over strong, but sometimes it's a nice balance. Yeah. It depends. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of lavender either. No, yeah. I, no I agree And their that. bagels are bomb. Like, the only thing I like lavender in is, like, a, a, a light tea. Mm-hmm. If you put a little bit of honey and lemon in there, it kind of overpowers the lavender. Like, if it's a lavender air freshener, I would love that. Yeah. If it's, like, yeah. a candle or... Yeah, lavender is not the best. As a scent, it's beautiful. As it's a food, it's very tricky. Yeah. Screw all of you, it's my favorite. No, we're not trashing it as a scent. I'm trashing it. That's a, that's, that's true, okay. I, I mean, I don't, I, don't, I don't care for it as a flavor unless it's Screw you, wife! I'm just kidding. He sweeps out a bakery and gets all the stale bagels he wants for free. <laughs> this poor homeless man. I mean, hey, I get it. After my folks and the kids at school, Mary and Ben are easy to be around. They don't expect me to be anything special. They like me just because I'm me. Ben showed up right after Mary and we sat there feeding the pigeons and eating stale bagels. Then this real old guy wearing a dented cowboy hat, scruffy denim jacket, and jeans and cowboy boots sat down on the bench across from us. I couldn't help staring. He really looked like a cowboy. But what would a real cowboy be doing in the middle of New York City? Then he took off his clothes and got down to his underwear and started playing the guitar. And then it all made sense. (laughs) I've heard about not talking to strangers or taking candy till it's coming out of my ears, but somehow this was different. So I said, <laughs> hi, and pretty soon he was sitting on our bench feeding pigeons and eating bagels. After a while, he turned to us and said, you're the only friendly folks I've met in this city. The, uh, and <laughs> although it ain't seemly to burden folks with problems, I'm going to bust, bust if and I don't tell somebody soon. Then he looked all around and said, I I'm a sexual you. predator. <laughs> I'm a bust of that. <laughs> I like touching people. Especially pigeons. That's why I'm taking a fancy you, Pigeon Mary. 
I like to imagine she's like a giant <laughs> pigeon. She's not an actual one. No, it's multiple pigeons in a trench coat. <laughs> but it's not a man. It's a chicken boo. Yeah. <laughs> then he looked all around and said, I reckon this will sound peculiar, but every word in is gospel or my name ain't Sam Brock. I'm a prospector. Been one all my life. Never found much, just enough to keep going. But last month, Millie, she's my donkey, and me found something real odd. Something never should have been there. Gold? Silver? Oil? I asked. Prostitutes? No. Illegal immigrants? <laughs> no, that's normal stuff. I found these. <laughs> and looking around suspiciously, he pulled a leather thong from um. around his neck. Dangling at the end of it was a small sack, which he emptied into his hand. What are they? I asked, staring at the tiny green stones. D don't look like much. Like green rock candy, said Mary. Radio. Oh, Oil. Mary is not a pigeon. No, she's she's an actual oh person. Oh my gosh. <laughs> we're just kidding. Like we're just. Oi, like green quartz, said Ben. Nope, <laughs> Sam this... said, stirring the stones with his fingers. Diamonds. D Diamonds. Come on, old man. Don't try to k kid us. Scoffed Mary. We're New Yorkers. Oi, Sam. Diamonds aren't green. Ben said. R2, if in there, irradiated. Sam said smugly. Why are you holding these irradiated diamonds? I was right, by the way, with the radium. <laughs> uh, I just want to point that out. What's that mean? Mary asked grimly. It means they've been exposed to radiation, I answered. Yup, Sam said. That's pretty smart of you, boy. You must do your homework. I like science. I said carefully. I like science. <laughs> you can teach me how to talk to girls. <laughs> the scientific method will teach you how to talk to girls. Anyhow, that's, so good. <laughs> that's what this green means. Didn't think much of them when I found them. But Just... now my teeth are falling out, <laughs> and uh, I have cancer now. <laughs> what the same? It'll be fine. I'll have to worry about it in 30 years. <laughs> Just glued them on Millie's halter. Never would have known that they was special if in that young oil feller hadn't seen them and got all excited. He told me what they were and put me on a plane so I could get them checked out proper. I'm trying to find out who says this. Before I die. Ever Before... since... And Millie dies because he put it on Millie's... But I can't take him into an airplane, so I need you to stick them <laughs> off your butt. <laughs> Here's a condom and oh, This is 83. You can bring anything on an airplane. True. Oh my gosh. Ever since I got here, there, there have been people yammering at me to tell where I found them. And they get real mad when I bones. Then, this morning, I woke up early and saw those these varmints rustling my stuff. They took every blamed thing except my clothes... They'd have gotten them too, but I was pressing them under my mattress. So he was naked while he saw this happen. Yes. Is what I am taking from it. How did you save the diamonds? I asked. They was in a sack around my neck. <laughs> did you call the manager or the police? Don't be a darn fool, snapped Sam. I'd have just been an old man who got himself robbed. If I was robbed at home, I wouldn't call no sure if I'd track him down myself and shoot him like a little piggy he is. But, Sir, this is New York. But Sam, I mean, this is New York. You can easily shoot people here. This is the summer of Sam, after all. <sighs> it um, is throwing me off that you're saying Sam, and I'm like, huh? Yeah. <laughs> but Sam, this isn't the Old West. It's the city. The police protect us. <laughs> <laughs> Good point, son. Only thing is, the Good police point. was in on it. Uh oh. Uh -oh. oh dirty. Hey, Cam. What do you mean? While I run after them and I found them, they was in this alley ripping my duffel all to pieces. There were Cocaine three bear. of them, and one of them was a policeman. I hollered, and the next thing I knowed, instead of running, they was chasing me. I gave them the slip, and here I am. I couldn't shoot on my six six sh uh, shooter because they had already taken me. <laughs> taken. But now I don't know what to do. I can't go to the hotel. I can't go home. They got my plane ticket and my last dime. You have to get help. I said, nope, I need my hidey hole, a place to lay low while I figure things out. You could stay with me, said Mary. I need uh, the company. <laughs> or I'd be proud to have you stay with me. He said also Sam. said with a wink. That's right, neighbor. That's right, neighborly, Sam said. 
But first, I need to hide these here diamonds. Oh Who's butt? Gosh. <laughs> I oh, love yeah. how this story starts out with, I'm a child. I've always been told not to talk to strangers. I'm going to talk to a stranger. <laughs> and also radiated diamonds. Radiated diamonds. Oi, give them to Bobby. He's responsible, suggested Ben. And nobody would think he'd have them. Sam's eyes stared into mine as if he could see right through me. And then he said, all right, boy, here. And he plucked the bag into my hand. And, uh, he now relax. <laughs> I'm trusting you. Don't let me down. He gave me a peck on the cheek and ruffled my hair. Oh, oh that's weird. <laughs> Why? That would have been so weird. I, I Chris stared. Hansen is just in the bushes waiting. <laughs> I stared at that bag of diamonds and at Mary, Ben, and Sam, all trusting in me. And I wondered what sh- I should do. I knew my parents would not approve of my talking something so taking something so valuable, especially if there were danger involved. Like radiation. But how could I refuse to help my friends who were depending on me? My so, friends that I just met. Yeah, I was well, say. And two of those friends are people you've known. Yeah. But the other two are, the or the other one. one is one you've literally met five minutes ago. Shh. He has entrusted us with a quest. Are, are you uh, grooming your wife at, like, a, <laughs> like a chimpanzee over yes. there? Yes. What are you doing in what? What are you seeing in there? <laughs> Do I have dandruff? No. Just, he starts just eating a tick. I've just found like a little uh, mole I've never seen before. Oh, Okay, yeah. so here are your choices, guys. If I ought to help my friends, turn to page 17. If I'm already in enough trouble and shouldn't take the diamonds, turn to page 69. Take the diamonds. Uh, yeah, let's go uh, to As much as I want to go to page 69. I want yeah. to die of cancer right now. Let's go. I want to take the diamonds, because why not? Okay, so we're going to page 17. Just because, you know. It's not really I much of a quest if you're like, here's a quest. Nah. I don't want this shit. I love doing that, though. I stuffed the bag in my pocket, then I wrote my my name, address, and phone number on a piece of notebook oh, paper and gave it to Sam with a wink. Did he really wink? No. I just keep adding the winks. (laughs) The awkward winks. Don't worry. I'll take good care of them. I said, tomorrow, Saturday, I'll be here early and we'll figure out what to do. Please don't give strangers your address. (laughs) The the pigeons were starting to coo sleepily. And I knew I'd better get home. Being late would only make the report card seem worse. As I got up, I thought I saw someone watching us between the branches of a tree. It was just Chris Hansen. <laughs> I started to speak, but then the face vanished, so I shrugged it off and said nothing. Anxious. Anx- actually, oh my god. Actually, I was anxious to get home and show the diamonds to my dad. I guess I should have told you before this that he's a spy. What the fuck? Um, he's not doing a great job if his 10-year-old son knows he's a spy. And then he's, yeah, like, well, so here, Dad... I won't tell anyone about it. Hey, Dad! Well, not actually a spy. You know, James Bond. Well, my dad is like James Bond's yeah. boss. He organizes stuff and he knows everything. It didn't take long to get home. We live on the top floor of a converted factory. As I unlocked the door, I smelled dinner. It was my favorite. Roast beef, corn on the cob, mashed potatoes, and chocolate cake. I know hey. I shouldn't be hungry, but I, f- I feel hungry with that. It's, it sounds like a good meal. I decided to let the diamonds wait until after dinner. There you are, Robert. Your mother and I were wondering if you'd been kidnapped. Haha, <laughs> I chuckled as I remembered I gave my address, phone number, and name to a stranger. <laughs> my dad chuckled at the joke. I'm a great spy. Hurry up and wash your hands, dear, said my mom. Everything's ready. All through dinner, I waited for the right time to tell dad about Sam and show him the diamonds. But the right moment never came. Ooh. You know, the, that great transition when he's like, hey, I was talking to my friend about a radiant diamonds. Funny I'd mentioned that, Dad. <laughs> Finally, Dad put on his glasses and said, well, let's see the documents. I handed it to him reluctantly. Using his knife, he slit the envelope and unfolded <laughs> the paper. After a minute, he put it down and stared at me over his glasses. And slit my throat. <laughs> Is there some mistake here, Robert? No, no, sir. I whispered, failure. It, it's on all caps. So I had oh to yell my it. gosh! Robert, how could you possibly have failed any subject, much less English? You speak English. <laughs> me, me fail English? <laughs> that that's impossible. impossible. <laughs> okay, I did a King of the Hill reference. You did a Simpsons one, so that's great. <laughs> I tried to explain about the diagramming, the poem, and the giggling, but it didn't work. 
I'm very disappointed in you, Robert. He said in a tight, quiet voice. Uh, I would have felt better if he'd yelled. Yeah, I get that. You realize, of course, that all privileges are withdrawn until this grade is improved. Go that the includes box. this weekend. Oh and, no. Until that minute that minute I'd completely forgotten we were supposed to spend that the weekend at the shore. You will stay at home memorizing this poem and be able to recite it for us. Oh my gosh, Letter you were kidding. Perfect. Sunday night when we return. Oh John cried my mother. Dorothy, how many times do I have to say, stop, stop coddling this little bitch of a boy? Smack. Just yeah, exactly. <laughs> slap. He doesn't hit me, but he definitely slaps my mom. Uh, <laughs> God, that's fucked up. Yeah. But you're laughing. Yeah. Dorothy, you've got to stop coddling the boy. Look where it gets us. I don't ask much, but I do expect a decent report card. Just read these notes. Robert is not working up to his full potential and not interacting well with his peers. No! Being alone for a weekend will give him time to think about mending his ways. He's socially awkward. We better isolate him further. <laughs> exactly. No more discussion. My mind is made up. Then he got up, walked into his den, and shut the door behind That's him. That's such so a childish out. parenting thing to do. I've decided. Storms away. Well, and again, Your like... Your parents didn't do that? Well, I, like, I hate to be, be that guy. But it should be a it. discussion. I feel like it should be. I mean, that's the, that's the a proper thing to do. That's the what a true regular adult would do. But my dad was not that way. I was gonna say like wow. my mom and my dad would sometimes be more, but sometimes it would just be like, no, this is what we're doing. Yeah, and no discussion. Yeah, yeah. No, I feel that. I guess mom tried to change his mind, but it didn't work because they left first thing in the morning without me, Damn. without even saying goodbye. Why oh, do oh. I feel like it was an excuse so that dad and mom could just bang the bang whole weekend? weekend? Okay, they didn't actually say goodbye. Activate all the alarms, said my father. Since you won't be going out, you'll be perfectly safe. And remember, I expect to hear that poem when we return. Bye, Bobby! I'll be at the show fucking your daddy, <laughs> said mom. I mean, whoops. And as she kissed me on the cheek and whispered, <laughs> you can get all the ice cream and cake. And then they were gone. Hey, it's hey, cake and ice cream for di lunch, dinner. Just saying. Yeah. Let's go. Aww. Oh, no. I can't believe I failed. <laughs> <laughs> well, and again, I'm like, if the kid's socially awkward, then why is isolating him? Yeah, no, that's not good. I feel like taking him to the shore and being like, hey, go talk to those kids. Interact with humans. Yeah. Hit Stop talking to the old homeless lady and the guy that gets... That has bagels in his pockets. Oi, don't make fun of old Ben here. He just has the bagels. Oi. The apartment seemed so big and quiet and empty. I felt abandoned. And then I remembered where my dad kept his playboys. <laughs> my hand slipped into my pocket. <laughs> oh my gosh, what? And closed around a leather bag. The diamonds! I'd forgotten all about them. I'm prom I promised Sam that I would meet him. Mary and Ben this morning. What would they think if I didn't show up? But if I did, I'd disobey my father. Oh no, so, the person we love so much. We have two decisions here. If I should obey my father, activate the alarms and start memorizing the poem, turn to page 113. Nah. If I should go to the park, tell my friends the problem, and then come home and work on the poem, turn to page 37. 37. 37, here we go. Fuck your dad. Yeah. I'll, Don't I'll leave say, the kid alone and say, then expect him to not say stay out of the house. Though. Well, you're out. You're outnumbered. Mm -hmm. How's it feel to be outranked by how women? How do you feel? How do you feel? <laughs> is it to be sammed? Doesn't Sam. feel so good, did you? Does it? You, you, that's a definitely Meg moment there. <laughs> <laughs> you're the new me. Shut up, Meg. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. There are times where I am the Meg. So yeah. I have to go. I promised them I'd be there, even if I just explained that I can't stay. It'd be better than not showing up. But I had to do something with the diamonds. I didn't feel safe carrying them, as my tingly bits were feeling extra tingly and poor. And I got a burning thing on my skin, because it can still burn. I looked around and then thought of just the place to hide them. There's a light hanging outside my bedroom window. It has a misty glow that's real pretty. When I was little, I'd lie in bed pretending that pixies lived inside the light. One day I checked it out, no pixies. But then it was daylight. Instead, I found a loose brick. Okay, that's interesting. I've hidden things behind it ever since. It was the perfect hiding place for the diamonds. Once I made up my mind, I felt better. It's important to keep your word. So I locked the door and hurried down to the square. Only when I got there, no one was waiting for me. 
The twinge of fear nibbled at me as I remembered the face behind the tree. What if something terrible had happened to Mary and Ben and Sam? Okay, guys. Three decisions here. If you go to Mary's home, we go to page 41. If you go to Bagel Ben's Bagel basement. Ben. Bagel Ben's basement. Oh. Page 54. Oh. If I decide to go home and wait, turn to page 121. Go home and wait. Let's go home, but I don't feel great about like going to... I would have picked Bagel Ben, so I guess we're going home. The basement. Also, the fucking basement. Is that a record that says scratch and sniff the origin of the feces? Yes, yes, and it's it is. And it's a butthole is what it's covering, by the way. Oh. Yeah. It's censoring the butthole. Oh the my butthole. Goodness. Did you ever think about how many things people want to want to want you to do and be? Oh, wait, was it the right page? Yeah, it is. It can get really confusing trying to figure out the right thing. What I mean is, there are things you should do, things you ought to do. Oh, we're dead. Things you want to do, and then things you must do. It's hard knowing sometimes. I had a feeling that no matter what I did this time, somebody was going to be disappointed or angry with me. I thought about it till my head spun. Then I went home and locked all the doors behind me. Mary, Ben, and Sam knew where I lived. They could come get me if I if they needed me. That's concerning. I just hope the bad guys didn't know. I sat down to work on that stupid poem. I kept waiting for the bell to ring or the phone, but they didn't. I started to go out a million times, but I didn't. Wait, I started to go out a million times. Like you started to leave and then it was like me. By Sunday night, I knew the poem and my dad was pleased. There now, Robert. That wasn't so painful, was it? My friends might be dead, dead, but okay. The fact of the matter is that it was painful. I recited my poem and got a passing grade, but I never saw Ben or Sam or Mary (laughs) ever again. Uh, I don't know if they're all right or not. I hope so. I think about those diamonds and about showing them to my dad, but I never do. Let the pixies have them. The end. There you go! So are we going to visit Mary or Bagel Ben? Bagel basement? Ben! Let's do the basement, fuck it. <laughs> the basement. Right. Bagel Ben. Bagel Ben. I just want his nickname. That's a great nickname. Bagel Ben. Bagel Ben. I'm start wor- uh, carrying bagels in my pockets. Bagel Noelia. <laughs> it doesn't, doesn't work. It's always, gotta, it's always gotta be the mini ones, too. It's like, can't be the regular I'm thinking size. of what would be a good one for Noelia. I gotta carry nougats. Noelia Smelia. <laughs> Nugget, n- nougat Noelia. N- no, we can use maids. Nutty use Noelia. <laughs> you uh, carry nuts on you. That one's pretty good. <laughs> Newton Noelia? Like Newton. Newton Noelia. Oh, that was, that's pretty catchy, too. How about Marshmallow May? You Aww. just carry marshmallows in your pocket. And you throw them at the kids. I hate marshmallows. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We'll call you Chipotle Weiss. <laughs> You don't even like Chipotle. You don't even eat a Chipotle. <laughs> it doesn't that's even why, go here. That's why I wear the hat. <laughs> Folks at home, he has a Chipotle hat. Recently, like a couple of days Weasel ago, Weasel. he had my, because we originally thought he was allergic to the black beans, but he had like a little bite of my burrito. I had pinto beans this time and he still got hives. <laughs> oh my so God. there's something I was like, it's Chipotle. been years since this happened. I was like, screw it. I'm, in a, I'm at home. Mm-hmm. I have Benadryl right mm-hmm. there. It's like, let's do it. And Little t- like a little bit of eyes came out. I'm like, mm, yeah, let's not. Mm. I wonder what it is. Right. I'm trying to think. Maybe of... they put like something coffee related in there somehow. I had no idea. But I know you're allergic to coffee. Mm. Not in the sense of it gives me high. Not true. Mm. Well, and I'm like, I'm trying to think because it's also like the ingredients themselves. Because I'm guessing you've had cilantro and not had or and or rice before. Yeah, and in everything, lime. They, everything they serve, I've had like at home. Yeah, I was gonna say maybe it's like, like some kind of oil that you don't normally have. Like Sometimes they cook with it. My yeah. mouth does tingle when I eat chipotle, so maybe, maybe it's, it's something acidic in there. Maybe they put some freaking coke or something. <laughs> <laughs> cocaine in that. So you come back. <laughs> Gotta have that chipotle. Ben <laughs> lives in the basement of Kaufman's Bakery on Bleecker Street. Lovely. And it took only a few minutes to get there. Oh dear. Bagel Ben basement on Baker at Kaufman's Bakery on Bleecker Street. That's wow. a lot. Yeah. I ran down the dark stairs and knocked on the door. At my touch, it swung open. Oh no. I walked in slowly. Ben, you here? But other than the soft hiss of the pipes that crisscrossed the ceiling, there was no answer. Only the room filled with bagels. They stared at me as I walked in. I want to imagine they have googly eyes for some reason. When you say they stared. That's not what it is at all. I know. I felt for the light cord. Bright light filled the room. 
Ben will sprawl across his damn. cot, a long smear of blood staining oh his cheek. Oh my god! Oh damn! Oh. Holy shit! Ben, are you all right? At first I thought, I hoped, that maybe he had just bumped his head or something. But in my heart, I knew he hadn't. Oi, let me at them. I'll k- kill the bums. Oi. Snarled Take Ben groggily. Quickly, I wet a sock the first thing I found and patted it all over Ben's face. There is now jizz and... I was about to say, that was a crispy sock, I'm I'm guessing, because it's just the one loose sock in his basement dwellings. (laughs) I need water. Musty, moldy. How how did you get syphilis... How did you give yourself syphilis, Ben? (laughs) Uh, Let's see here. I thought we took care of it. What happened, Ben? I am not sure myself. Ben groaned as he opened his eyes and struggled to sit up. I stayed over at my friend Mike's last night, and when I came home, I noticed right off that the place had been dumped. I looked around the small basement and realized that he was right. Ben isn't very neat, but his room didn't usually look this bad. He has been into this man's basement before. Uh... I mean, he knows where he lives, obviously. (laughs) Clothes hung from pipes. Books were strewn across the floor. Hey, is this it, is just my room. Is That's this the say. first time we met this guy? No, no, no. no. Oh, Sam, okay. Sam's the first one you met. Oh, Bagel okay. Ben's your usual friend. Gotcha, gotcha. That your parents don't like you hanging out with because he's a creepy man named Bagel Ben. Oh. Who, who carries bagels? That you've been in his basement. And stuffing exploded from the shreds of his easy chair. Aww. Oh, that sucks. Hey, I started to go upstairs and ask them what had happened. An explosion, maybe. When whammo, someone dropped the Empire State Building on my head. When I wake up, this little guy is sitting in my chair and he says, That was just to get your attention, Mr. Bagel. My colleagues and I would like you to tell us where the gems are, or we shall be forced to jog your memory. Jog it rather hard if you get my meaning. I got his meaning all right. I understood him fine. He had two big goons standing next to him, looking like they'd love to tear me in half. So I asked him, what he wanted to know. What does he mean, gems? Do I look like a jewel- jewelry <laughs> store? And then he says, Very humorous, Mr. Bagel. Tell us where you hid the diamonds, and we will leave. If you don't tell us, Kaufman's Bakery will suffer a most dreadful fire. You, unfortunately, will be a victim of the plagues. What could I do, Bobby? I had to tell them something or they'd be they'd be killed me, you know? They'd have killed me. Hey. My throat got dry, and I could hardly get the words past the lump. Did you tell them I had the diamonds? Come on, Bobby, what do you take me take me for? A narc? A fink? I'm no dummy. He actually says a fink. I love that. I said they were hidden in the fountain in Washington Square Park. Then this guy looks at me and says, My friends and I hope you are telling the truth. I should not like to be you if you're lying. Then they slugged me again. Oi... Ben groaned. I need an aspirin. My head is still killing me. Bubula. <laughs> does he say bubula? Or no, he doesn't say bubula. I mean, he does have Jewish mannerisms. Yeah. He does have, like, certain things that he said is not me adding that, except for No, bubula. and I'm like, I'm sorry, I don't mean to be serious, but Bagel Ben is definitely a very, like, yeah. Oy. Well, the bagel is the most perfect food. Yeah, and saying that, I'm like, yeah, I'm sorry, this is, like... familiar? What? I'm trying to think. Oh, uh, freaking the animated food movie. No, oh, oh, the bag. Oh, sausage fest. Sausage fest. Yes, yeah. thank you. That's why I was like, "Why does this sound so familiar?" Ben, no, we just need to get a hot dog and put it into a bagel. No, <laughs> and uh, reenact the food orgy at the end. Ben, more than just your head is going to be killing you if we don't get out of here. Remember what they said about lying? I think we ought to get out of here and real quick. But where do could we go? What should we do? Think of the house. All right, so you have three options, guys. We could call the police. If this is your choice, turn to page 23, my favorite number. We could go to the park, find a cop, and point out the bad guys. Turn to page 88. We could go back to Mike's and hide out. Turn to page 45. I say hide out. It's your favorite year. As much as I love the... As much as I know you love your number, fuck the cops. Yeah. Um, Who's Mike again? We could go back to Mike's. uh... I don't know who the fuck Mike. Who's the Mike? Who's I Mike? I don't know. I thought we only met we Ben Mike? and the Mr. No, we're Bobby. Man. Yeah. We should go to Mike so we know who Mike is. Let's go to Mike. Mike. I don't know who Mike is. Sure. I'm down. Who's Mike? Yeah, okay. We're who gonna... are I, you? I thought I'm Mike was us, but I forgot his name. Our name was Bobby. Hey, I just met you. And this is crazy. 
<laughs> We're on the run now, so hide us, maybe. <laughs> so here we are at Mike's. We've stayed all weekend and no one could ever find us. Mike lives in a sub-basement under a fancy restaurant. Oh my goodness. It's safe and warm and we have lots of leftovers to eat. You'd be surprised what people leave on their plates at these classy places. Oh lord. What the fuck? I here. suppose I should feel okay, but I don't. I left my poetry book at home and I won't know that stupid poem. I don't even want to think what my dad will have to say. And we still don't know what happened to Sam. If I've learned anything about this, I suppose it's that you can't run away from your problems. You may put space between you and them for a little while, but they're still there and will only get worse if you ignore them. Do you think it's possible to become a bum at 13? Yes. The end. Okay. Oh. That did not explain who the fuck Mike was. That's yeah, like, who is, that. who is Mike? Okay, so do we go directly to the cops or do we do, go to the park and we find go the cops? go 23. Cop? Park. Let's oh. go 23. Okay, so we're going 23. Cops it is. Bad boys, bad boys. What you gonna do? Going straight to an option for you. Sir, you're in my way. Stupid reference from a stupid... <clears throat> Video game straight the yeah yeah. Hello, police. My name is Robert McCloskey, Kloski, Kloski, and I'd like to report an assault and battery and a breaking and entering. It took almost an hour, but finally two policemen knocked on the door. That's relatable. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say. Yeah, that's 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 Police about right. Really that has not aged at all. Nineteen eighty three, twenty twenty three. This 30-year-old or forty-year-old book is still telling the truth. If nothing, in some ways, it has a faster response time. We told them the whole story. Even though they wrote it all down, they kept grinning at each other. When they walked up the <laughs> stairs afterward, one of them said to the other, Tell me, Frazetti, how come we always get the fruit kicks? Oi, Bobby, I don't think they're going to help. We'd better do something else. Yeah, they thought we were real nuts. We could go hide out at Mike's. <laughs> we could go to the park and try to get the policeman, so I guess we're going Let's to the go policeman. To yeah. They just, just go to Mike's <laughs> again. <laughs> We still ate a bunch of food and that solved nothing, but hey, you know. So if we had gone to nervous. page 69, we would have gotten an instant fail. Wow. Uh, yeah, sorry. So I was just passing that page. Makes well, sense. Well, hold up. There is a literal moment where you're in a deli using a sausage as a weapon, and I want to get to this page, and there's a stereotypical oh, Mexican. Oh. Look, there's a, look, doesn't that look like a deal? Yeah, it does, actually. <laughs> yeah. That, that just looks like someone's deal, right there, just using a sausage. All right. Back to... Oh, no. Bagel. Bagel Ben. Ew. He's... What does he look like? Sam, go ahead and describe what Bagel Ben looks like. Like something J.K. Rowling would have made. <laughs> Do tell. Oh! I did not... The stereotype of hook-nosed Jew is Folks? what we're going for. The, the go- the, was it the goblins? In the, the goblins. In the, Folks the, at the, home. In the bank. I was being jovial. I didn't think he was actually going to be a hook-nosed Jewish caricature. But he is. I thought that oh. you guys were trying to say he's a goblin, but I forgot that's a stereotype. Huh? No, that's yeah, I'm a like, no, goblin. no, no, I do not want to be associated with saying no. that. No, I'm saying. I, I just thought it, it's, really? he's Jewish. I, I, th- I figured he was Jewish because he liked bagels. Well, and Benjamin is this like is a yes. biblical. I was about to say, Ben Grimm, one of the most openly Jewish characters in, in Marvel comics, yep. is a very openly Jewish man. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Well, yeah, Benjamin is an Old Testament name. Yeah. Wow. Okay, yeah, uh, we'll probably finish with this one, guys. Uh, God, that. Oi, big old men, they call me. Oy, yeah, I was gonna say. My nose, it hurts. Maybe, the... maybe, how about we just say they broke his nose? They just broke his nose. No. No. Yeah. <laughs> no. no. He, just had a, he had a really big nose and they punched it really hard and it got cartoonishly bent. I... <laughs> sure. Sure. It makes me feel better about it. I'm like, it doesn't fix it's, anything. It's swollen because he got punched and it's also broken. Tell, I, tell you said that, it's, it's, That's what helped you sleep at night, honey. Well, the little old lady looks like your mom. Let me see. <laughs> kind of hard to tell, but yeah. Face down. It. Face down your mom. Yeah, I get it. Mary was sitting on her favorite bench in the park, her largest bag on the ground beside her, stuffed to the brim. Uh, I'm going to change Ben's voice to just a New Yorker. Oi, Mary, look what they did to me! Ben cried as he collapsed on the bench beside her and pulled off his old felt cap. Already the bruise had turned an angry purple. Oh, Ben! Oh, wait, no, she was an old. Hi, Ben, who did this to you? exclaimed Mary, fussing over him. That is not her voice. Uh, Oh, cut it out, Mary, Ben said, wriggling in embarrassment. Besides, we gotta get moving or they'll get away. 
Who? Who are they? I, I don't know what voice what she has just, anymore. Just keep changing. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Asked Mary. Let's go somewhere less out in the open, said Ben, and we'll fill Mary in. Yeah, you're definitely going more Ben Grimm, but that's fine. Yeah, that's I good like with it. me. Yeah. We and found an like empty Grimm. concrete chest... Ugh, excuse me. We found an empty concrete chest table in the far corner of the square and huddled over it. We were surrounded by little old men in berets and beards playing chess, mahjong, and dominoes. No one even gave us a second glance, as we told Mary about the men looking for the diamonds. Then I added... Look, the three of us together would be too easy to spot. I think we should separate and come at them from different directions. Oh no, split the party. What do we do when we find them? Ben asked, rubbing his bruised head. Find a policeman, point them out, and get them arrested. It sounds okay to me, but everyone be careful. No dead heroes, said Mary. I'll take the left-hand side of the fountain. Ben, you take the right. Bobby, you take the middle. I stood and watched Mary and Ben blend with the crowds. Sighing, I pushed my way through a group of street musicians who had set up on the sidewalk. They were attracting a crowd, and I had a hard time getting past them, so I took a roundabout way to, to the far side of the fountain. On the way, my stomach started rumbling, so I bought a hot tub for, from a cart at the edge of the park, and I piled it with everything. Chili, sauerkraut, onions, mustard, and relish. I figured it would hide my face and be a good disguise. That's a hell? lot of things on there. I mean, that sounds really good. I, I love a hot dog with everything on it. I don't know about sauerkraut and chili at the same time. Uh, yeah. I don't know about sauerkraut and relish. Sauerkraut, sauerkraut. Oh, sauerkraut and relish. Oh. Relish is good. I was going to say, actually. I would, relish for this. I would go for it. I don't like relish. As I, I, I like dill relish. Mm. Sweet relish. Blech. I like I like either. As I pushed through the crowd, I spotted three men in the fountain. Now, the fountain hasn't worked for a long time. It's big, maybe 40 feet across, and has this wide rim around it. Inside, there are these steps that lead down to the center. There's no statue in the middle or anything. Just a bunch of pipes that used to shoot water into the air when the fountain was working. The men were crawling around, sticking their hands down in the narrow water pipes. I guess they had figured out that nothing was hidden in the fountain, because even from where I was standing, I could see the angry expressions on their faces. They were yelling at each other and waving their hands in the air. Then suddenly, in mid-bite of my hot dog, my crowd just mounted away, leaving me standing alone. It's him! yelled one of the gang, and they leaped out of the pool and started toward me. I was scared to death, and all I thought of was running. The hot dog still in my hand, I turned and ran back the way I had come. Three decisions here, guys. The musicians were still playing. They had a really big audience now. Maybe I could lose them in the crowd? There was a policeman off to my left by some kids playing ball. I could run to him. Behind me, I could hear a guy lecturing about the evils of communism. Uh, <laughs> People were heckling him, so I knew he had an audience. I could mingle with them and then turn around, turn away and find Mary and Ben. Yo. The one that's being heckled about the evils of communism. There's no communism. <laughs> okay, we're going to the communism guy? Yeah. Fuck that dude. I'm okay with messing up his speech. Whereas the musicians, I'm like, they're just trying. Yeah, they're just they're trying. Mr. Mr., the evils of communism, please tell me more. This is what this picture screams to me. <laughs> oh my gosh. Hey, communism's bad. And I say to you, we must always be aware of the peril of communism, cried the speaker. Communism surrounds us. It messages, its messengers are everywhere, even here in this crowd spreading like a virus. Yeah, well, I don't see no commies. Jeered a guy who looked like a wrestler. I got the voice just right for that one. Yeah, I was going to say, that's about right, yeah. And another man clutching a bottle yelled, Who you call like a communist? I even voted it said he is. I the communist. <laughs> Thinking I was safe, I gulped down my hot dog. But they, here, there they were, heading right at me. He's a communist. I think you're full of beans, pal. There ain't no communist here. Help! I hollered, give me sanctuary! I am... Oh, wait, he's... Oh, he's, he's Russian. I should be giving him a Russian voice. I am Andrei Sergei Gregorkovich. My parents escaped to USA. Bad men tried to kidnap me so parents would return to Russia. Help, please. Oh, wait, that's you saying it. Okay, I'm going to keep the Russian accent for me. I flung myself at the speaker and tried to look young, Russian, and helpless. <laughs> Ooh, I'm young, how Russian, and look, helpless. Please help say, me. How do you look Russian? I have vodka in my pocket. <laughs> please help me, I told you we were surrounded by commies, yelled the speaker. 
Don't worry, Andy. No one will get you as long as John Quincy Hancock has a breath left in his body. <laughs> he picked up a sign and said, Beware communism, and waved it around like a bat. The gang stopped, and the little guy said, We are, we are not communists. We are relatives. This boy is sick. We're taking him home. He tried to look friendly, but it didn't work. <laughs> the big man pulled out a gun and pointed it at the crowd. Oh my god! Which began to edge back. Put the gun away, cried the little guy. But it was too late. The crowd went wild. All of a sudden, there were shots, and then there were cops everywhere. <laughs> All right, that's enough, yelled the big red faced policeman. Let's everyone go down to headquarters and get this straightened out. So they loaded all of us in a big police van and drove us, drove us down to the station. Mr. Hancock was confused when I said I was really an American, but finding the gang's guns got the police interested in my story. They called my dad at the shore, and he and my mom left for the city right away. I told them about Sam and where to find the diamonds. Then Mary and Ben found us and told their part of the story. So here we all are at my place. My mom and dad and Mary and Ben and Sam and John Quincy Hancock. Mom made some hot chocolate and everyone's getting along real good. Ben and Mary are uh, are each carrying on about how the other could have been hurt. I thought you quit that mushy stuff when you got old. Sam says there aren't any communists in Nevada. Invite Mr. Hancock to come visit. Mr. Hancock says he just might do that. Gay. My dad keeps calling me the hero of Washington Square. Mom just hugs me and says that even heroes have to memorize poems. The end. Dang, that's a happy... That was not a happy ending. We got saved by an asshole. Yeah. I hate to say it. Anti-communist guy saved the day and I don't like it. Yeah, I'm like... Well, it is the 80s. I will say that. It is. It is 1983. Wait, that's the big leg. Okay, there I totally forgot about that part. (laughs) I was just hoping to fuck with the guy because, again, like... Fuck that guy. You're going to fuck with the guy when people are trying to get you. Like... Mess up his speech, like no. <laughs> I am up saving. <laughs> God damn it! You guys chose the worst ending possible. Oh my Being god! Being saved by anti-communist. Oh yeah. my god! You guys got saved by Ben Shapiro's dad. Oh, oh no! <laughs> Is it anti-Semitic still? Then? Yes. <laughs> All right, guys. I I think that was a pretty interesting. Let's read. Oh gosh! I, I'm interested in finding some more of these TSR related ones. I wonder if, uh, is this one mentioned pixies in it? So I'm wondering if all of them might have, like, a reference to a magical creature. Mm. If they don't, you know, necessarily One of them you drink and you'll find the green fairy. Yay. Ooh, there's some more, uh, there's actually some endless quests that are actually Dungeons and Dragons ones, apparently. Okay, so the previous ones in this, in this book series are clearly Dungeons and Dragons related. Dungeon of Dread, the Mountain of Mirrors, the Pillars of Pentagon... The Return to Brookmere, Revolt of the Dwarves, I want to play that one. Ooh, that, sounds Ooh, that sounds cool. Revenge of the Rainbow Dragons, I want to play that one. Hey. Hero of Washington Square. Oh, that's based on the Top Secret game. Okay, that's why. So it's a game made by them as well. Oh. And Villains of the Vol- Volturnus, which is from the Star Frontiers uh, game they have. So that's mm. cool. So it's actually based off a game that they actually made. That's cool still. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, makes sense. It is TSR Publishing, so... Still has aged poorly in a lot of spaces. Anti- the anti-communist guy makes sense. He still exists. I mean the anti-Semitic shit. Yeah. Hey, thanks for joining us this week on Speaking of Which. If you enjoyed what you heard today, make sure to like, subscribe, rate, review. All that stuff really does help us out. And make sure to follow us on SOW underscore podcast on Twitter. And if you really like us, patreon.com slash speaking of which... Uh, one dollar a month gets you bonus content weekly. We, we I release a bonus episode every week, sometimes two bonus episodes a week, where I review a movie, and I also release our show notes and any cut content we may have. It's just one dollar per month. I, I I buy that for a dollar. Sam, where can we find you? You can find me on Twitter and occasionally Tumblr at Berserker Rose. Oh, yes. uh, find me on YouTube and Instagram. Uh, Force Left Hander. Keep. The uh, lose the, the e. e, yeah. Lose the e, keep the r. Yeah. Hand doctor, and you can also find our friend uh, Brandon, who can join us this week at Aldrich Made M A I D, uh, where he posts updates on his game he's making. Play it. Well, you can't play it. So play. You can look at it. Play the videos. Look at it. <laughs> look at it. Look at it. Look at it. <laughs> have uh, a have well. a gay old time. Hacha tacha. Uh, stay tuned next week when it's going to be a special. It, I'm either doing a Fantasy Kings, it's Ooh. a Space Kings themed one, 
or if I can come up with an idea, or maybe doing just a one shot that has fantasy role play aspects. Oh, there cool. you go. Yeah, depending on which one, and then we'll also be doing a Dungeons and Dragons quizzer if I can come up with the questions. I can also give it a shot if you want me to come up with. One. I got it. Okay. I got it. Okay. It's just it's been it's hard to type with one hand. Okay. Ain't it right, Weiss? <laughs> we'll stay quiet for that one. It's hard to type with one hand. Uh, my it? my my facial expression did not go over the mic, so. <laughs> <laughs> As well, it, it, here's the problem no, 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 with me with typing is that I keep wanting to try to type with my second hand, uh, but it's like it's so slow. So like I keep I start finishing up with this hand's typing, mm-hmm. and it's like oh no, I just messed up this this word this right whole here. Word, yeah. So I have to delete. Like I'm I'm one of those people who deletes the whole word instead of going to the letter and changing it. Yeah. So I, I do the same thing. So yeah, that's that's the problem with that one. And Chris, drop that new song of the month. Okay, I got it. My name's Chris, the editor. I love you all. Oh, ain't he sweet. Oh, I'm not gonna hurt you much, kid. Hey, what's happening, guys? This this month's song, oh god, I'm an idiot. This week's song is Lavender by some new up-and-coming people called Sweet Flood. Uh, They only have one song out on Spotify right now, but more is to come, apparently, so look forward to these guys, maybe. I thought I'd give someone with only one song a chance, and I, I do like doing that, so maybe check this whole song out on Spotify. Okay, bye.